welcome guys to um, the latest reveal of what is again a new car or a slightly new car now I'm not even going to say this time or I'm going to keep it for six months or I want to keep it for more than a year because you know what I like with cars it's sort of an impulse sort of thing that doesn't really last very long in my life um, but I am here today to reveal this car behind you to you now obviously there's two changes of view there's this now you're never going to see this again i hope i won't say that again because just like cars things change um literally last night no joke um i caught the bottom of my chin with my shaver without the guard up and it took a chunk out of my chin so i'm looking like a baby face right now so that'll be the last time you ever see this hopefully on camera and secondly yeah change of view uh change of brand change of car definitely a change of engine this car is in itself rare, but the engine configuration on this said car that is less than 40 in the UK and roughly on the road, it's probably less than 20. Um, so it is quite a rarity. It's a very rare combination. So you're going to see now my new car and I hope you like it very much. Here we are, guys. The reveal is coming through now. Here we are. Have you guessed it? Have you guessed it? If you still haven't guessed it, there he is. Look at that beauty. Now, obviously, as you all remember, um, I had a coupe quite a while ago. This isn't the same coupe, obviously. There's a few quite major differences from this coupe to the last one. Um, but I have indeed bought myself a coupe again. I was so much in love with the last one that when it came to running it, I sort of realised I really love it but I can't afford to run it. So if you don't know a lot about me very quickly, I do a lot of miles. I do between 10, 15, almost 20,000 a year. Um, I was running an ES9 V6 in one of these and it was just too expensive but I should have known that before I bought it. But the thing is if you're going to get a coupe like this, you only buy a six cylinder, uh, not a four cylinder. So I sold it, we had the Citroen in between. Um, and then this actually got offered to me by the man himself. You might actually recognize this car, um, but this was offered to me by a very, very famous guy in the French scene. If you don't know who he is, I won't tell you, but you should be able to work it out. If you don't know, you don't know. But I will do a video with him, the old owner at some point, to come and test drive the car since it's been modified and actually see the difference from when he had it to now. Now, I want to say one thing about this car. The only negative that I can literally see is um, this looks really clean to you right now, but the paintwork, rims, etc., it's not really the best condition. Overall, excellent. It is a black car, so as you would imagine, with black, I didn't really have the choice, of course. With black, it's not the best colour. Uh, it probably highlights it even worse. But I thought I'd get the bad bit out of the way first, and that is that the paintwork is a bit shoddy. So, when we do a video around the car, you see the rims are a little bit flaky, uh, all the calipers are 50 shades of rust, silver and red, um, and there is slack appeal and scratches and bits all over it. So yeah, that's the bad bit, but the good bit is the car itself and what's under the bonnet. So I'm just thinking to myself, where do I even start with this video? Well, I'll summarise it very quickly. But I'll walk you around and show you the ins and outs of this very 407 Coupe. So this is a facelift and this is running the very rare bi-turbo 3 litre or revised 3 litre V6 diesel. Um, the earlier pre-facelift models had the 2.7 which was rather debatable in reliability um, and actually fairly poor in fuel economy for a V6 that is um, and performance wise it was just a bit sluggish. So the 3 litre has been heavily revised, again twin turbo like the 2.7, but producing much better power, much cheaper tax levels, and also the fuel economy is actually really decent. So this is a 3 litre bi-turbo V6, uh, twin turbo as I mentioned, and this is 241-ish horsepower standard as 450 newton metres, and obviously this absolute beast of a car is not going to stay that way for long. So I'm going to grab the camera, I'm going to run you around this car and show you all of its quirky little features. 
So the 47 Coupe is, well, a debatably good or bad looking car. A lot of people do hate on it, but it's one of these things that when you see it in person, it's really not as bad as what it can look like in photos. Now quickly, before we sort of walk around the car and have a little chat, we're gonna talk about what's been done to it so far modification wise, just so you know that it isn't a completely standard car. Now evidently it has tints and the tints go really well with the black. That has recently been done, sort of in the past couple of weeks. I'm also running spacers, so on the rear, I am running 25 mil and on the front I am running 20. Now Derosa could go a little bit further with these rims, go a little bit further out but the fitment is very good. Now while we're here down the side of the car we might as well talk about the obvious. So there's two things, the rims themselves, these are an optional extra from factory for the car, they're 19 inches so these only came from factory with one singular 18 inch option and this is running the optional 19s which i must admit i really really like um they've grown on me immensely since buying the car i love them anyway but they really do suit the car and i think if i was to change wheels down the line it would be quite hard for me to look to sell these wheels because they really just look excellent on the car now these are due a refurb but i think i'm going to keep the silver because i'm liking this sort of chrome on black on silver look it's just a classy sort of look i don't want to go too over the top and too mad like i do with a lot of my cars you know and make it look a bit boy racer i think as it looks it's nice it just needs a nice fresh refurb now also the second thing i haven't mentioned which again i'm hoping you can see is that this has been lowered so last weekend i fitted h and r lowering springs and that's a 40 mil lowering kit and that is on the front and the rear. Now the front is sitting a tad lower than the back, which is rather annoying, um, but either way, I must say it looks rather nice. Again, I'll show you from some angles. Let's have a little look at this, look. Look at that. I'm gonna come around the front here as well so you can see from this angle here. Check that out. So, I'm going to talk about the car. Now, an interesting one is from factory, um, the highest spec trim level was the GT. Now, on this model, because it was so late in the 407 stage of build, you're talking sort of the last year or so before they got rid of these, because of the amount of work that's put into this car because of the engine change, which I'll discuss in a little bit, um, it meant that Persia went over budget. Um, and the price for this was well over 30,000, which at the time was a lot, or probably I think was the most expensive Peugeot. Um, for sale at the time and a lot of people couldn't justify or weren't interested in buying it so what they actually did was they put it down to a sport trim level um, to basically allow the GT extras as optional extras to try and bring the price of the car down so it was more competitive in the range um, and when I said they've made some adjustments they had to do quite a lot of adjustments um, within the car um, engine and rear to equate for the new setup. Um, the main one being on the three litre only, um, they came with the twin exit from standard, which I think looks really, really nice. Now what they did for that is they cut the floor pan out, so you lose your space for your full size rim um, with a, spa a space saver replacement instead. Um, and what's basically happened with that is because they've lifted that up, they can fit the long slender back box along the back of there to give you the twin tips, which has obviously um, made quite a change to the rear end inside the boot um, and obviously the front end as well. I'm sure with the 2.7, but also with this, they had to adapt a lot of it to be able to run the battery from the rear because there's literally no space in the engine bay. And we'll get to the engine bay in just a moment. So that is a quirky little feature. The twin tips on that is something that signifies the 3 litre along with the facelift chrome over the windows down the side of the car. So this is actually a sport spec. So compared to my GT I had before, it's actually lower spec. Um, I'm missing not too much, I must admit. All I'm missing is the JBL speakers um, and the uh, cornering headlights, I think is all I'm missing off of this vehicle. Now, in terms of condition, the interior is rather lovely. The seats are fresh. As you can see, this is a black on black interior. Um, I haven't actually seen many facelifts offered with the red interior at all. I don't know if they even did the red interior in the facelift. Um, but this is black on black. It's got the facelift interior. So it's got the gloss surrounded grills. It's got the gloss center um, unit with the updated radio, Bluetooth connectivity as well, which isn't featured on the old one. And you have maps that aren't run off of a SIM card either. 
Um, but yeah, it's looking fresh in here. Evidently, this is, of course, with my wonky hat, an automatic, it's a six-speed automatic, coupled with the three-litre engine. So, yeah, so as spec goes, some of these will have less spec than the higher model versions in the range because of that reason. So I have lost a few specs, but we're not making a massive difference to my life, really. I would be gutted if I lost heated seats and things like that. Um, but like I said, it was done for that reason. So let's open the bonnet and have a little look. So guys, welcome to a sea of plastic. For those that have eagerly spotted, there is duct tape around this because I am testing this out. So from factory, weirdly enough, they leave a big gap here on the intake pipe um, for the air filter box. Now this, this big gap that's here is made to reduce the induction roar, but you're actually losing potential power because airflow is coming straight in through here and out over the top into the engine bay, which is rather weird. So I have actually put a uh, plastic membrane under here and taped over it for now to see how it drives, see if it feels any better. Now I'm going to look at doing a modification by getting some sort of pipe fitted that doesn't allow for this hole to be here and it will blank that over because you do get a bit more induction noise. Um, there isn't actually much on this, it is very, very quiet, um, but you do get a little bit more from that. And I feel like that's such a waste of, uh, such a waste of air that could be going into your engine, you know. But that's what that is. Nothing's broken. Uh, not yet, anyway. <laughs> Touch wood, there is none. But yeah, that is the engine, so there we are. Um, underneath here is a labyrinth of pipes, wires, and sensors. When it wants to come off. Nope. Trying to do this with one hand evidently isn't working very well. There we are. So yeah, it's probably one of the worst looking engines that I've ever seen. And obviously down in there, hiding away, we have a wee little turbo. And again, on the other side we have another. But that is the engine. Now these with fairly basic tuning with the Azin AM6 gearbox, which is in this car, which does take away some of the power that this engine really offers. Um, there is a straightforward stage one tune that will put this car pretty much up to 300 horsepower and somewhere around 500 to 550 newton meters. Um, so there will be a video at some point where we're going to remap this car and see what we can get out of it. Now in the meantime the first thing that is happening before that is the exhaust at the back of the car is getting removed with a back box delete which is happening this weekend. So in my next video, you will get to enjoy that. But basically, that is the engine. It is just one massive collection of um, pipes and wires and stuff. It looks really awful, to be honest. So here we are. As you can see, this is sitting on 96 and just over a half thousand miles. In fact, when I bought it, it was only just tickling onto 96. So I've already done, you know, a good almost 700, 800 miles on this car already. And it has been absolutely blissful. And guys, like I said, I bought this because it was a rare opportunity that if I hadn't have taken, I never would have got probably again. Um, when I was looking for a coupe, these were our budget. Um, now my budget has grown. I've managed to sell my C5 off the off chance and be able to pick it up. So I was lucky enough to be able to get this um, at the right price and I've enjoyed it ever since. Just to do a quick comparison for all of you guys that might own uh, two litre diesels and are looking to progress or whatever engine there might be to one of these. So I was running a two litre HGI automatic six speed again. Um, the same box as this and that was on my um, C5 and what I've basically found is the tax on this 3 litre by turbo is the same. Um, the insurance has stayed the same. I had to uh, pay a slight change, a uh, slight upfront payment to change it over. Um, but my insurance premiums have stayed the same, basically, maybe about £100 or so between the two. Um, and my fuel economy is also just as good on this car. Now, the C5 had been remapped at the time as well and was performing more efficiently than what it was when it was standard. Um, but yeah, this um, is really, really unbelievably good on fuel. 
but the performance is just absolutely nuts. So we will do some 0 to 60 runs and I will show you the insane straight line acceleration of this car because it is ridiculous. Now it is a 1.8 ton car, but with the twin turbo power, it's just ridiculous and it is absolutely relentless. So guys, that is not a very brief intro as always to the new project car. Um, let's hope that I can keep it until at least 2024, which is about a month, <laughs> and hopefully keep it through 2024 until Peugeot Fest at least, and hopefully onwards. I genuinely can't see a reason why I would change. I wasn't going to get rid of the C5, but I was offered this. The C5 sold and gave me the money to get this, and I was just like, oh, I'm going to have to do it, and I don't regret it at all. I really, really don't. So guys, you're going to see over the next few months, performance, modifications, daily maintenance work, car paint and bodywork repairs and all everything else involved with owning a 407 coupe so guys thank you very much um, i'm glad to be back in a peugeot as well back in a 407 coupe um and i'm really excited for the journey ahead so guys i'll see you next week in the video revealing what noise we can get out of this car with a bat box delete so until then i'll see you guys very soon